Hello everyone, this is Allogam Zeekville, with my uh, AMS shirt on, not that that matters. The point is, our lesson today is on, as promised, Beizu's identity. Alright everyone, so as promised, Beizu's identity and the extended Euclidean algorithm. That's our lesson for today. So first, some notes on the history. We have a, a French mathematician in the 16th and 17th centuries by the name of Claude Gaspard Bache de Mezirac. He, according to some sources, he was the original discoverer of what is now called Bezu's identity. And so I just figured I'd give a little bit of background on him. He, he actually wrote a Latin translation of the Greek text called Arithmetica, by Diophantus, and he called it uh, Diophanti. That was in uh, 1621. And in fact, this translation inspired some things to come in, in the future, uh, well, and, you know, uh, later on in the history of mathematics, I mean. Um, for instance, it, it inspired Lagrange's four square theorem, which is something I'll be talking about in my next series, actually, after this one, probably. So. You can you can see me post that eventually, but um, you know according to different sources, I including Wikipedia and Wolfram Mathworld, uh, it was this translation, this very same translation uh, of Diophantus's uh, Arithmetica, in which Fermat made his famous remark that he had a truly marvelous demonstration. That's what it was, of Fermat's last theorem. What's you know it became known as that, uh, but of course no such demonstration was found, no such proof was found, so it's, it's that famous example. Uh, evidently, it was in this book that uh, Fermat actually made that note in the margin, you know. Um, so, just figured I'd make that, make that um, reference. But before Bache had actually written that translation, he wrote a book filled with mathematical puzzles involving things like balancing weights, card tricks, fairy problems, and so forth, uh, different things like that. Um, so basically, mathematical problems and, and fun little puzzles like that, which happen to remind me of Professor Layton, if any of you have heard of that. Perhaps, or perhaps not. But, you know, many of the Layton puzzles seem to be of a similar style, I suppose. Not all of them, I just I just was reminded of that. Anyways, I just thought I wanted to give some background on, on this French mathematician, because when you think about it, there are a lot of... Uh, rather remarkable, rather um, important historical French mathematicians, particularly in this time period. And uh, another such mathematician was, of course, Etienne Bezu. All right? Now, he lived uh, in the 18th century. But Etienne Bezu, after whom this is, of course, named, extended the idea of, of Bezu's identity and basically extended it to, to polynomials and things like that, um, which I might describe later on. Uh, Bezu also proved various other theorems involving the intersection of polynomial curves. And in fact, someday, um, Bezu's theorem might be a topic of a future video. Um, there's a distinction to be made, by the way, between Bezu's theorem and Bezu's identity. Uh, Bezu's theorem involves intersection of polynomials, so it's, it's interesting and feel free to look it up, but I, I might make a video later on about it. Bezu, I just wanted to make the point, he, he's a very, he's another very interesting character in the history of maths, because he wrote many books, especially for wider audiences. So, in some sense, maybe he's kind of like a, uh, uh, Dr. Avner Ash, or perhaps Dr. Marcus du Sotoy of his time, perhaps. At least that was my impression. Um... So if you've heard of those mathematicians, which I hope you have, I recommend their books very much. Um, you know, perhaps this is somewhat analogous, this, this mathematician. And so his books were translated and ended up being used in universities. First of all, they were translated to English, among other languages, and they ended up being used in universities in the U.S. And obviously you can still buy some of them, in fact. Um... Maybe I'll, I'll put, uh, well, I don't know.
you can look them up if you if you want to. Um, but I just wanted to make that note uh, because, in fact, this mathematician was respected enough that he uh, eventually got a statue constructed in the French city of Namur. Namur. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that either. Sorry, please forgive me. But um. Indeed, he actually got a statue of himself uh, upon his death. Thanks very much for watching. I'll, I'll um, see you in part two. I don't even know if I'm going to publish this. It might work. Right. See you later, everyone. Thanks for watching.